have the privilege of being up here and speaking while my husband so tenderly goes down and takes my place. So (laughs) I just want to say a quick prayer for you guys. So all children, you guys are standing. Everyone's standing. Your families, can you just like snuggle them just a little bit? Can you just like kind of huggle them? Yeah, get them, get them, just get them. Lord, I just bless the, the families in this place. We have mixed families. We even have a little bit of brokenness. Look, God, I just see so much beauty stemming from ashes regarding families in this house and in this region. And I just believe that this house of Praise Fellowship is going to be a, um, a forerunner of families on fire for you, Jesus. I bless these kids with eyes to see and ears to hear your spirit today, Lord. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. You are released. (laughs) So I just, you know, God is here. He's here already. He's here. You know, when we, we sing about him, the whole service, he can't help himself but show up. He can't. He's already here with us. And what a privilege it is to be in the presence of King Jesus. This topic is so, so uh, we're going to be talking about one spirit, which is one of our core values um, and I'm going to read it, and we're going we're gonna to kind of dig into some, some depth of it, but we're going to start out reading it first together, if that's okay. I love that AJ and Tammy did that. I'm like, oh, I like that a lot. So, <laughs> so is everyone with me? Can we pop that right up there? Pop it right up. Awesome. Okay, so one spirit to hear and see God's will By engaging the Holy Spirit with eyes that see and ears that hear. Let it be. And so the verse that is correlated with that, I just want to say that really quick. It's John 14, 25 through 26. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. It's so good. One of the biggest things, okay, so one spirit. I just want to say right now that this house is going to be a house of prophecy, prayer, and praise. And it's going to be centered around communion. Remembering what Christ did for us. And I just really believe, like, what's happening and what's about to happen downstairs with the kids. I'm Kira Spencer, by the way. I am newly the children's director here at Praise Fellowship, and I'm super excited. Um, God is going to do amazing things with our children. He already is, actually. Um, In fact, I'll just share this really quick. wasn't planning on to. But just a couple weeks ago, we had this little activity of the kids, um, the six and seven year olds were in the middle classroom and there was a cross on the wall that I had put there. And the little activity was if we felt any shame, sadness, fears, or sin, let's just write them on sticky notes. We're just gonna, we're just gonna put them on, we're just gonna put them at the cross. And I went downstairs and the cross was filled with sticky notes with cute little stick figures, including things like, I get mad at my sister. And just sin with all these like yucky things. Like God is, God is doing something. He's about to break out downstairs. And we better watch for it because we're going to feel the, the ground trembling. Because oil is going to seep up from the ceiling downstairs into up here. That's what's going to happen. Okay. I, was, I could get like carried away. So, um, okay. Do you actually have that like little gif thing? I was going somewhere. Okay, is that, like, is that movable? It's kind of moving. It's not really moving. So there's this guy in this chair, and I was joking around with my mom because my mom was like, Kira, can you please tone it down when you're preaching because it's too much? 
I'm like, oh, mom, I love you. She's like, she can tell me how it is. So I know that we have been like giving you so much information and so much fire. And I was like, mom, is this how you feel? She's like, yes, that's how I feel. So I just want to say I'm going to do my best today <laughs> to stay on track and to really be sim simple about, what, about hearing God's voice because that's what we're actually going to go after today. Um, and so I just thought that was really funny. I was like, I don't want to leave you guys sitting in the chairs like this, like, ah, it's too much. Um, okay, so. <laughs> hospital daily and pray for people till like nobody's sick anymore and the, ch the hospital has to close? That's a story in the book. Yes, encounters with Jesus. And so during this journey that we, we were just on in our two years of doing missionary work, this, it started stirring up in me, like, for my children, like, Lord, Lord, I do not want them to eat the breadcrumbs of my walk with you. I want them to encounter you for themselves. And that is actually the, the whole heartbeat of downstairs for the kids. So it's, it's like the Lord has spoken to me about my family, and it's like expanded into all kids. Because I'm like, this is God's heart for all children. So anyway, so Scarlet, we were in Jerusalem, and oh gosh, it's oh, so good. We were with our teams and doing treasure hunts, and um, I can talk about that another time, but it's just hearing God's voice before you go somewhere, and then you find that person, and you connect with them, and um, it's really amazing. So we, we were praying, and we got some visions and some numbers and, and stuff, and we wrote them all down. We broke up into teams, and we went into the old city of Jerusalem. And we're walking there, and we're like, yes. And we're, like, going to go to, like, where should we go, Holy Spirit? And we're going to go to this cafe, this coffee shop in, Cl or in Scarlet, was holding my hand. And we were walking towards this cafe, and she goes, Mom, 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 I got another one. I was like, Okay. She goes, Mom, there's going to be a woman in this coffee shop um, that has red hair and a long, beautiful dress on. And God wants to know that, God wants her to know that he loves her. And I was like, ooh, that's very specific. And then she was like, she's like, oh, and Mom, she's going she's gonna to already know Jesus. I was like, okay. So we go in. I'm like, yes, Jesus. Let's, all right, let's go. Let's go. So we go in. We, like, hang out. She, like, peers around. Like, she's, like, tiptoeing and peering around. She's like, no, nope, she's not here. So we're like, okay, well, let's just get coffee because it's super good in Jerusalem. And so we <laughs> get some coffee. And we're just hanging out and having conversation and chatting. And, and all of a sudden, I was, in, I was talking to this Jewish woman. And she comes up to me. She's like, mom, 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 she's here. She's like, that's her. And I look over, and there's this woman with a long, beautiful dress on with red hair. And I was like, all right, babe. I would love you to wrap up this conversation and we'll do this. So um, I, you know, we were talking and then that conversation ended. And I went over to her. I was like, okay, babe, you ready? She goes, nope. <laughs> I was like, oh, babe, come on. She's here. You totally have to do this. She's like, no. No. I was like, oh, fine. Well, just I'll go with you. She's like, no. I was like, ah, all right, well, I'll go on your behalf. I'll be your ambassador. And so I go over, and I start telling her, hey, you know, my name's Kira Spencer, and we're just visiting Israel, and we're, we've been praying with our friends and our family for Israel, and my daughter got a, a picture for you. And um, Jordan's walking towards me, and Scarlett's, like, hiding behind him, like, you know. And, uh, and I was like, and she saw a woman with a long, beautiful dress on with red hair. And she, she felt like God wants you to know that he loves you. She pops up out of her seat, and she's like, what? I know Jesus. And I was like, of course you do. <laughs> and so we were talking, and Scarlett, like, kind of sort of comes out from behind Jordan and is, like, looking away, you know, just kind of hanging out. And so they end up connecting, and she pulls me aside later, and she's like, hey, I just want you to know this was such a beautiful gift for me because earlier this week I would actually sp was in my time spending, in my time with the Lord, I asked him if he loved me. 
And in that moment, he met me, and I felt like confirmed, like he does love me. But he is reiterating those words over to me through your, through your daughter. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have children in this room, that's God's heart for your kids, for your families. Because families are the smallest little church that we have. So another story I just want to share really quickly, hopefully it's quickly, that one was five minutes, um, is we were actually, and I actually haven't really told people about this very, very much, um, and I don't know why. I think maybe it was just like a super special kind of thing that the Lord and I had, um, but he really in asked me to share this with you. So um, we were in Egypt this summer, and we were ministering at the Lillian Trasher Orphanage, which has been withstanding for over 100 years, um, and the history there is amazing. We read about the, the orphanage in our homeschool the year before, and I was like, someday we're going here, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. And then that next summer, we went there, and I was like, wow, that happened very fast. <laughs> but there was a day that we were actually, we, we, the girls always had lunch. Us women had always had lunch with the girls and the boy and the guys on our team always had lunch with the boys. And so we had lunch and everyone, all the other ladies had left. Um, but I forgot something. I can't even remember what happened, but I went back in and then like I went back out and I was like talking to some of the girls kind of mi miming because I do not know Arabic. Like, shukran, that's all I know, is thank you. <laughs> um, and just a couple of little little words I know, but I, d I really don't know Arabic. And so they, we were kind of mimicking, and I got, I got like kind of the, the uh, picture or understanding of what she was trying to say, and she was asking for prayer. I was like, yes, yes, let's do this. So we, I get out Google Translate, because that dude, listen, it's the best. It stinks really badly sometimes, but it is like, if the Lord wants to speak through this and have it kind of work out, he's still going to get his point across. So, but this time it was really amazing. It worked out. So I'm like typing, I'm like, da -da 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 -da. you want me to pray for you? And I'm like, and she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so then, um, so then I started praying, but then I got a vision for her. And so I typed the vision and I showed her and she was the only one, she was one of the older girls, and she was the only one of the only ones that could read um, Arabic because the other girls were illiterate. And um, I, she read it, and she was like, oh, like, what? That's, like, for me? And I was like, yeah, that, I, and then I, I'm typing. You can't respond right away, you know? You're like, yeah, I'm typing. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is what I, I saw from the Lord for you. And... Like, all of a sudden, all the, like, she said something, and all these girls just started piling around, and they're like, what's going on? And then, and I, wanna, I want you to know that before this instance, because of the language barrier, because of the culture barrier, and because they actually get visitors quite often there at the orphanage, we had this ginormous wall between us and the kids. Like, it was really hard to connect with them before this. And so then the girl asked me, she took my phone, and we translated, she asked me, there was a, a woman that was a widow, because the orphanage was for orphans and widows. There was a widow standing nearby, and she um, was an alcoholic, and I had already seen her drinking that morning, um, but she um, had some serious, there was like just something not quite right, um, and they asked me to get a word for her. Like, will you pray for her? I was like, well, yeah, sure. So. I got this word, and I got this picture of, like, her wrapped in chains and dogs barking at her. And I felt very strongly that God wanted to break those chains off of her and release her into mental freedom. And I typed this off in Arabic, and I'm like, oh, let it be, let it be right this time. Let it work out. Um, and she was, they, she gasped. She's like, oh, that, that's right. That, that's, that's real. That's what's happening. You, you know. I was like, no, God knows. And so all of the girls, including the women, like the cook, came running out. Like, they're like, will you do me? Will you share with me? And I was like, yes, of course. And I spent like 45 minutes standing there typing on my phone, like praying. And they were like, 
like, they were moved. They started crying. This was some of the, this was, from what I could gather in their response, maybe the first time that they felt seen by God. And that's the power of a prophetic word over somebody. So that, I'll, I'll never forget that because it was just me and the Lord and these beautiful, beautiful girls <laughs> who the Lord loved so much. And he declared that that day he was going to tell them. And it was a privilege to partner with his spirit in that way. Okay, so the next slide. <laughs> We're going to talk about the four different voices in our lives. We have God, Satan, us, and others. And so we're going to talk about each one just a little bit, okay? Oh, gosh, it's already 1126. Okay. So, God, what does his voice sound like? We're just going to go through a few verses. And so if you want to just go ahead and we're going to go through these. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. We can go to the next one. The word of the Lord or the word of God is living and active. <laughs> the words of God are flawless. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And all your words are true. You know, when God speaks, his voice is powerful. It says it right in the first verse that we, that we read. It gives light to the dark places and understanding to confusion. It's like butter. It's kind and sweet and gentle. It's so incredibly desirable. It is only true. He never lies, deceives, tricks, is mean or harmful. And this, like, this is just super cool because God is already speaking. He pre-spoke today. I'm going to bring Joy up here because she came with me this morning. She's like, I think I'm supposed to share something. I was like, she shared with me. I was like, yeah. I love it, because we're talking about hearing God's voice. <laughs> All right, you ready? <laughs> okay, I do not want to be up here. Um, I God woke me up at 5 o'clock this morning. I had made this piece. I'm a stained glass artist, by the way, if you don't know. And I had made this piece of honeycomb with dripping honey. Um, God, I see pictures. That's one way that God speaks to me. Um, so last fall, as I wor was worshiping, um, God chose me, had been showing me a picture of a huge vat of honey up at the front of the church. And he'd tip it over, and it would pour out three rivers of honey flowing through the church. Um, I saw that many, many times, um, all of a sudden, one Sunday, it changed into a waterfall of honey, unending, tons of honey, just pouring. Um, so last Sunday, as I was worshiping, I saw a massive lion walk and onto the front. Um, he had this beautiful crown with many, many jewels. He just opened his mouth, and there was honeycomb in his mouth. The honey was just dripping, just pouring, flowing through the congregation. Um, and he gave me that verse that Kira just talked about. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And as I was meditating on that last night, um, I went to bed. And this morning I woke up with this verse. Therefore, let us confidently approach the throne from which God gives grace, so we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. And that just so impressed upon me, his mercy, his grace is flowing, his love, his joy, his 
it's just if sweet honey love is flowing it's up to us if we want to partake if we want to receive that um, I would just encourage you, I'm going to hang this somewhere in the church, and I want, when you see this, I want you to be encouraged that it's here, it's available for you, his love, just rivers of it, not just streams, rivers, dripping of honey. So, that's what I think. Thank you so much for sharing, you did great. <laughs> you know, I told Joy, I was like, Joy, I have had visions of honeycombs and honey dripping over the past two years. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is spot on. She's like, I don't want to do this. I love it. I just love it. It's like sometimes that's actually how you know it's God, when you really, really don't want to do it. <laughs> so that's how God speaks. That is God. Aslan was in the room with us last Sunday. So good. So good. All right, let's talk about Satan's voice. What does his voice sound like? Um, you can go to the next slide. Demons, okay, so the main agenda of demons, and I get this from Blake Healy's book, Indestructible, and it blew my mind. It completely blew my mind because he is a seer in the spirit, and he can see demons all the time. And so uh, over his 30 years of experience as being a seer, he sees the angelic as well. This is, this is the conclusion that he had come to from all of his experience. That demons, their agenda is to make people believe lies about themselves, about God, and about others. I, I want to just say, like, I've fallen into the trap of each and every single one of those. It's too easy. It's so easy. So uh, you can go to the next slide. I just want to compare God's voice with the enemy's voice and make it very clear. Um, I, get, I got this direct thing from um, Adam Narciso's um, identity devotional. He was one of our speakers in YWAM. He's incredible. Um, and I'm just going to read through these. God's voice calms while Satan's voice obsesses. God's voice comforts while Satan's voice worries. God's voice convicts while Satan's voice condemns. God's voice encourages while Satan's voice discourages. God's voice enlightens while Satan's voice confuses. God's voice leads while Satan's pushes. And God's voice reassures while Satan fronts. His voice frightens. God's voice stills, and Satan's voice rushes. I saw this, and this is one of the things that was taught to us over, like, the past couple of years. This is like, no! Because whenever you hear something, you can weigh it against the character and nature of who God is. And if it does not line up with his character and nature in these things, it's not him. It's not him. It's the enemy. I want to talk about our voice just really, really quick. Um, just really, really quick. What do we sound like? And I want to tell you that in the inner voice, like those little thoughts or like thought bubbles with, with thoughts and words and all of those things that come into our mind, it's always our voice, pretty much. Like sometimes people will have other people's voices um, it's usually our voice. And I, it's, that's where this can get really confusing. And this is why we need to press in and, and really focus on who God is and weigh it against his character, like I had said before. Well, okay. Our voice expresses our own desires, comforts, needs, and is typically very self-focused. I want, I wish, I don't want, me, 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 okay? That's our voice, our agenda, our will, pushed into something. Um, you can go to the next one. We're going to talk about others. Okay, this is super important because the voice of others will often lead us to or away from God in the truth. 
This is why it is important which voices we allow to influence our lives. Maybe it's because you're like, I need to choose your friends wisely. It's exactly, it's the same for us as adults. Like who we allow, what we allow into our, into our, into our sphere. And that includes people who aren't our friends. They're people who we listen to. They're people who we watch on TV. They're news, anx- they're news anchors. Okay, mm. so which voice? I just want to like quickly talk about this. Um, so this is, th- this is my personal experience and from what I have gathered, this is many people's, like I have weighed this against quite a few people, okay? And the first voice that we most often hear is God's, like the One thing, right away, boom, the Lord. The second is usually Satan's voice, doubt, unbelief, accusation. Well, that was stupid, wasn't it? Oh, gosh, that, is that right? Is that right? Oh, gosh, no, like, I wouldn't, no, he's not speaking to me. And then the third is often our own voice that either agrees with God's voice or Satan's voice. And so let me, let, me, let me just say this, too. If the first thing that pops into your mind is dark and evil, it's not the Lord. <laughs> just just want to be clear with that. Because if we're struggling with oppression and darkness in our lives, he, he actually has a mute button, like, in your mind towards, like, hearing the Lord. We're going to talk about that in a sec. So... Activating our image centers. So, so really, really quick, I want to talk about image center. This right here, everybody put your hand on your head. It's our mind. It's our mind. And I'm using these very basic, this is in a kid's book, and I love it so much I have to share it with you. Because it's basic and it's easy. Okay? So right now, everybody can close your eyes and picture a cow. Picture a cow. Now picture your bed. Now, an elephant flying. Now picture Winnie the Pooh. Okay, you guys can open your eyes. (laughs) That is our image center. When we're kids, it's called our imagination. But actually, we were given it as a gift from the Lord because it's like a big chalkboard that he writes things on for us. And our image centers can get really screwed up. You can go to, yeah, whoa, oh, you guys are so. Our image center history, what can get in the way of us hearing God's voice? There are two things. Our image center history, what we have allowed, if we have allowed pornography into our minds, If we have allowed um, dark movies, like horror movies, I had to get delivered from that. If we allow certain music that's really, really dark and not from the Lord, um, we have to, like, it it messes with us. I also want to say that I have no doubt that there are coerced or were imposed upon to see or do things that they should have never, ever, ever done. And I want to release you from that shame because that's not your fault. The Lord wants to heal you today, today, and to clear your image center. So we're going to do that like at the end, um, which is super exciting. But the, the second thing is, I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, so actually, before we move on, I do want to say this. Some of us, so some of us may even need to partner with the Holy Spirit and come up with a battle plan or a strategy to avoid um, opening ourselves up to those things. We we have to, we have to protect our image center. We do, because it's the very thing that God wants to connect with us. He longs to speak with us. He wants to walk with us in the cool of the day. That's why he created us. 
And in order for that to happen, we need to preserve one of the most incredible ways that he speaks to us. Okay, so... And that's because their faith is simple. They haven't yet allowed their experiences to determine their basic belief system. And therefore, they're quicker to believe in the things of God than most adults. God longs to speak with us. He longs for us to embody a childlike faith. Why? Because they're super quick to say, oh, I want in. Yeah, totally, 100%. I want to hear God's voice. They're always going to try, most likely, even if they, they pretend not not, yeah. Huh? I'm pretending not not, too. They totally want to. They want the things of the Lord because our spirit men inside us, that's actually what is drawing us to the Lord because we were created in his image. And therefore, the very nature of who we are longs to commune with the Lord. And speak with him and go walk with him in the cool of the day. Okay, so I'm just gonna let's let's just go. Okay, so I'm just gonna let's let's just go to Jesus right now. So I, I just let's go over this. I I'm sure you guys have heard this a million times, but we're gonna read this. Um, and it's Jesus or it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's John chapter four, verses three through nine. This is Jesus and the Samaritan woman. You guys there? We ready? Okay. So he left Judea and went again to Galilee. He had to travel through Samaria, so he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the property that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, worn out from his journey, sat down at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to drink water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, because his disciples had gone into town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, she asked him. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. You guys know the rest of this, like, the, most of you know the rest of this story. Like, he encounters her. He reveals that he's the Messiah by giving her a word of knowledge about her five husbands. And the one that she was with is not her current husband. That's, that's the word of knowledge and a, a form of prophecy that, that Jesus, through partnering with the Holy Spirit, revealed to her to open her eyes to see him. But I just, like, want to focus on this. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? First of all, this was extremely culturally inappropriate, completely. She was a woman, which Jewish men did not speak to to women. And number two, she was a Samaritan. And they hated their guts. Like, completely hated their guts. Like, the disciples, imagine them coming back. You kind of, I don't know if you've seen Chosen or not, but they're like, what is he doing? It, they're probably, there's a bit of embarrassment potentially on the, the disciples' part. Like, uh, this is totally inappropriate. And they're alone. They're alone. But I wanted to bring this up because I just want to point out, well, let me let me talk about this. So, she was at the well midday. The women usually get their water in the morning because they gather it together. Some of you know this already. They gather it together, and, and it's in the cool of the day when it's not super hot, and, and they all do it together. She was at noon at the well by herself because, why? Because she, was a prostu- she had prostituted herself. She had five husbands, and there was deep, deep shame on her life. Deep. Deep shame. And I want to point out this story. She was unclean, having been married five times, an adulteress, and yet Jesus chooses her. He speaks with her. And not just speaks with her, her, but includes her in the most intimate revelation of what was coming through him and through his spirit. (gasps) To her. 
And her initial re reaction was doubt and unbelief. Mm -mm. I'm not, what are you doing talking to me? Nobody talks to me. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worthy of being talked to. Like, I don't know who you think you are. And I don't think you know who I am because otherwise you wouldn't be talking to me. How many people in this room have felt that way towards God? Well, let me tell you right now that he's going to speak to you. He does speak to you. And it's time to unclog the things that we have, we have clogged our minds up with doubt, unbelief, our image centers, those things that have inhibited us from hearing God's voice, from hearing his love and his gospel like perfectly and wholly over and over and over again because that's what he does. Over and over again, he'll say, oh, I just love you. I love you. He also chose her to carry the first message. The first evangelist was this woman. Not one of his disciples, this woman. He's going to choose you. You don't have to be worthy to be chosen. He's already cho chosen every single person in this room and every single person downstairs. He wants to speak with you. So where do we begin? We pray for it. We pray for it. We ask for it. When I read um, Blake Healy's Indestructible, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. He can see angels. He can see like the demonic. I actually don't want to really see that, but I totally want to see angels. So then I started praying like, God, will you show me angels in the room? Will you show me? And just last year, he started showing me angels in the room when worship was happening. I was like, yes, yes. Like, they're literally, let me tell you, that angels are preparing this room for worship before you get here every Sunday. There are ribbons of his love across this room already prepared to give him glory. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Just ask him. He will show you. He will show you. And I just want to share a couple of things uh, you know, before we, we close up here, I just, like, God has given me and Jordan words and pictures and visions over praise fellowship in this reason, region more than any other thing that we have ever, ever, ever experienced hearing his voice for, ever. The very first thing, Mickey's funeral, Mickey, <laughs> We rushed home because we're like, oh, something, something. So, they, like, like, we had to. We, like, we felt this need. Oh, you know that feeling? Like, that feeling I was talking about. Like, the impression or feeling like, oh, we have to get there. We have to make it. We have to, we have to get home. We have to. We just knew. We just had to. So we drove straight for three days, morning and night, back across the country, and we made it for her service, which was so beautiful. And I love Dorothy's um, story of the, the orange purse. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. It was amazing. The service was awesome. And then the next night, Shane had, you know, the, there was the worship night. So Jordan and I came back. We were without the girls. We're like, oh, yeah, we can do whatever. We're, like, free. I'm like, sure, are you guys having a fire tonight? We'll go. <laughs> so, no, I love them. They're awesome, my party peoples. But we, we were, like, just up for whatever. We're here. We're available. So we come, and I saw, this is a vision I saw, there, were an, there was an angel in that corner, an angel in this corner, an angel in this corner, and an angel in this corner. And the ceiling was full of those balloons, you know, those drop balloons, like in, a, in like, um, a stadium or, like, a gymnasium. That's what I meant. So they were full of balloons, all different colors. And I knew that the balloons represented his glory. And each angel had a uh, rope to pull to release them. And I was like, oh, Jesus, your glory is here. Yes. We started feeling something so ridiculously strong about this place. It was insane. So I was like, oh, you're totally going to release those, aren't you? Like, not now, but you're, you're, you're going to. 
And, um, and so we had, I had that vision. I also, like, I was driving by one time meeting a friend for coffee. This was before we even, like, approached the eldership and we were like, <laughs> we're submitting our name for the pastorship or whatever it is. You know, like, in fear and trembling, Jordan had this, like, rash crawling up his neck when he was, like, talking to them. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, that's a... But this is all like the things that drew us here. Because God was revealing that he is going to do something so mighty and powerful. And then he invited us to be a part of it. He said, do you like, do you? I'm like, yes, of course. With like my friends and people I love at home. You're going to, to start a revival at home? Um, yes. Yep, we're in. We're so in. And I will say, we got back from um, the pastor conference, and we were praying in the parking lot before we, like, said goodbye to everybody. And I got a picture of the Lord dropping those balloons. His presence is here. His grace didn't leave, his ch leave this church. Why? Because his plans are like, mm, this place is key. It's pivotal in my story. And I want it. We have countless stories of God speaking to us about this place. And we, if you ask us, we are happy to share with you. Um, but I just want, I want to close up and honor the people downstairs. So let's read that. Um, yeah, where do, we, where do we begin? We pray for it. We ask for it. But let's read this one last time, the value. To hear and see God's will. By engaging the Holy Spirit with eyes that see and ears that hear. You can go to the next one. In Matthew 13, 16, it says, Blessed are your eyes because they do see. And your ears because they do hear. Let me tell you, this is a word for praise fellowship. We will be a people who see and hear. We will be. It's already happened. It's so exciting <laughs> and amazing. So we're just going to invite his presence. We're actually going to take a, a moment to clear our image center. And we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to minister to us. So I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to um, walk through a question that we're going to ask Father God that I would like you to also ask Father God. And then we're just going to wait a minute. And if you have a journal, write it down, whatever he says to you. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper, and I'm going to ask one more question. And we're just going to let Papa God just come right in and give us a big, wide hug. Okay? Let's close our eyes. God, would you come right now and cleanse our image center? Forgive us for the things we have seen and allowed into our mind. Holy Spirit, will you take that eraser and erase our image center history right now? Make our minds a safer place for you to share your heart with us. Holy Spirit, help us to create boundaries and strategies in our lives that keep us from, to the best of our ability, allowing any evil or harmful thing to enter our minds and therefore our hearts. Father, I declare that you are good. And in your word, you promise that if we call out to you, you will answer us. Lord, right now, we come to you and say that we want you to speak to us. We want to hear your voice. We choose to silence all of our own thoughts right now. We quiet our minds. We declare that this is a safe place, and we refuse all the lies of the enemy in Jesus' name. We bind and rebuke the spirit of unbelief right now in Jesus' name. We choose to only hear your voice, Father. Would you come and speak into our hearts right now? 
thank you, Holy Spirit. We wait upon you. God, what is one thing that you really love about me? Let's ask him that question and let him tell you why. some healing. So we're going to ask God to bring back a memory when you felt a lot of shame because of something you did or something that was done to you. He wants to heal that memory in you today. Hold that memory. Holy Spirit, will you minister to us? I release shame off the shoulders of the people in here today. you off in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to know that the Lord forgives you and for the things that happened to you, it was absolutely, absolutely not his will, his heart, or his desire for you. Precious dove, would you come a little closer, a little deeper? chosen I am loved I am wanted and you handpicked me for the purposes of your kingdom it doesn't matter what I've done it matters what you've done for me. That's the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters. So we release freedom in this place. We release healing in this room. He loves you. He's proud of you. 
there's no one else he wants to show you. He wants to be with you. Just you and only you right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for cleansing our inner center. Help us say no to things that we really need to say no to when we walk out the door. We, re we rebuke condemnation and we receive your conviction, Holy Spirit. We love you and we praise you forever and ever and ever, our dear and precious friend. The altar is open if you if anyone wants to come and just to you know let the Lord minister to you you can come and sit down you can you just need your Bethany time so if you can leave quietly you can go pick up your children <laughs> and just know that we love you it's not just Jesus. We love you too. You're enough. I just hear that word of that that somebody needed to hear that today. That you're enough. That you felt like you're not enough for years. Whether it was a teacher or a parent that you could never be good enough for, or even a spouse or a friend or an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, the Lord wants to, you to know that you are so valuable to him, that you're so enough for him, that he paid the highest price for you. proud of you. You make him proud. Jesus, we thank you. Just give him some thanks. And I just release you guys in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He's good. Praise him for his goodness.